Today, we're gonna to be talking about polygons. So for this next activity, you're going to need your Friar model. It looks like Freyer, okay, but we pronounce it Friar. You're gonna want your Friar model that looks something like this. It might even be on yellow paper, could be on a different color in your packet. In the middle, you'll see that I've written the word polygon, and we're going to be using this technique to explore what a polygon means. When we teach children new vocabulary words, we have a tendency to just give them the word and give them the definition. There's only one problem with that. They're gonna have a harder time remembering a regurgitated definition that you give them versus a definition that they come up with on their own. We're gonna use the Friar model to help them come up with these definitions on their own. So let's look at the term polygon. You should have uh, a little image with some shapes on it that are polygons. It might look something like this. What I just drew are all examples of polygons. Now let me show you some shapes that are not polygons. Here we have some non-examples of simple polygons. And by the way, there is a more complex definition of polygons. We're gonna be referring to simple polygons throughout this lesson. Based on the drawings you see in front of you here of examples and non-examples, I want you to think about what would be the characteristics of polygons. See if you can jot down a few of these on your own. Okay, time's up. You got a couple? If you said that it was a two-dimensional plane figure, you would be correct. By the way, I'm gonna write mine down here because I don't have as much room in the characteristics, but I want you to be writing these ideas up here in the characteristics box. How about, did you notice for all these examples that they all had straight sides, unlike some of these non-examples where I see some curved sides there? So straight sides would also be a characteristic of a polygon. Did you notice that for our non-examples, and this gets a little more in depth, that like on this one, they, I have two line segments that are crossing here. When I look at all of my examples, I don't see any line segments crossing. So one of the examples of a polygon would be that no line segments cross, or another way to say that is there's a single path to trace it. In other words, if I put my pencil on this, I can trace without crossing over something I've already drawn, versus if I trace this guy, I can't do it in one path. Similarly, another non-example would look like this. This is also not a polygon because you can see that um, I can't just use my pen to make one line and connect the whole thing. So there's not, we call that, there's not a single path. So polygons do contain a single path. Now what I want you to do is take your characteristics here of a polygon and see if you can figure out a definition. Again, I want you to write this down before you advance the video and check with mine. Check your definition with mine. I said a two-dimensional closed and simple figure with line segments as sides. Again, closed meaning no gaps. This shape right here is not closed. They all don't touch. Again, this definition is gonna go right here. Please don't feel the need to erase your definition and rewrite mine. It's more important that you come up with your own definition. I'm just giving you an example of something that could possibly work. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how you could use the Friar model to explore different vocabulary terms. By the way, this is not just something we use in math. We can use it in reading, uh, any even in social studies, science, things like that. Um, and what's great about it is that it really allows students to come up with their own definition and own characteristics based on some examples and non-examples that you give them. As you go through these lessons, try and start making a hierarchy of polygons in your mind. So what is kind of the overarching polygon? Is there one word that sums up all of polygons? What does that look like? Is there words underneath of them? Things like that. I want you to kind of start to try and categorize um, different shapes in your mind and think about, is polygon this really broad term or is it a really specific? term. Hopefully you've now got a better understanding about polygons and how to use the Friar model as well.